Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. I'm the Smithy D, and today we're going to be looking at some theory crafting and Darth Nihilus, and to see if he is worth it based on the information that we know. I'm currently not part of the Game Changers program, so it means I'm not sponsored by EA. So what that means is I'm not going to have any exclusive access to new characters, so I do apologise that I cannot show you any footage of Darth Nihilus as of yet. This is something I'm working very hard on to be part of the Game Changers program so I can bring you the best quality content with my opinion to it. In this video I'm going to play some arena battles within the background but I do apologise that I can't get you any Darth Nihilus content as of yet. The day that Darth Nihilus is available I will have you some footage straight away. I do have all the gear to take Darth Nihilus to gear 11. There is currently a big question to what star level will we obtain from this Lord of Hunger event for Darth Nihilus. This is something I cannot currently answer, but if we were to presume that we're going to be getting a 4 star Darth Nihilus at max level and max gear, you're going to be looking around about an 18k, so that's 18,000 health on a 4 star character. Compared to a 7 star character that has 24,399 health. So there isn't a huge difference with the health between a 4 star and a 7 star Darth Nihilus. And this of course is excluding any mods that are on the character. At max gear level, Darth Nihilus is going to have 120 speed and he has a whopping protection of 33,665. So that's also going to be present on a 4 star character. So that's more protection than Bay's Malbus excluding mods and that's one less speed than Darth Vader. Before we move on and start looking at Darth Nihilus' abilities, I really want to advise you on some important gear. In total, Darth Nihilus is going to need 230 Mark V Loranar Power Cell Salvage, so you can normally pick these up from the Agility Challenge or then farming them from other nodes within the game. You're also going to need 135 of the Mark III Merson Thermal Detonator Prototype Salvage. These can only actually be farmable within the game. Darth Nihilus will also require 150 Cabantes, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the full list of his gear for the link within the description. This will then take you to swgoh.gg. Hopefully this will help you start preparing some of his gear. So let's move on to his abilities and then we will finally move on to some theory crafting of where he fits in the game and what weaknesses he has. Darth Nihilus' basic attack is called Ceaseless Craven, so this is at Max Omega at level 8, so this deals special damage to the target enemy and dispel all buffs on them. If any buffs were dispelled, reduce the cooldown of Drain Force by 1. So pretty much my interpretation of this is that he has a basic like some fact that he's able to then dispel any positive effects on the enemy. This is where the fun begins because if you run General Kenobi with Darth Nihilus and use General Kenobi's ability where it gives the team retribution for any that don't have any debuffs on them, what that's going to do and essentially make is your Darth Nihilus is going to be very similar to how Kylo Ren works because every time he does do an counter attack and if he does debuff the enemy he's going to reduce the cooldown of Drain Force by 1. So essentially you could possibly get in a less turn cooldown on Drain Force. And this is without even taking a turn. Darth Nihilus comes equipped with two special abilities. His first special ability is called Drain Force and this has a three turn cooldown. Once Omega at level 8 this is going to deal special damage to all enemies with a 50% chance doubled against debuffed enemies to increase their cooldowns by one. For each enemy that is affected by this cooldown increase this will reduce the cooldown of Annihilate by one. This is essentially an unofficial ability block that cannot be cleansed. We'll get back to this once we start theory crafting on Darth Nihilus. Darth Nihilus' special ability is called Annihilate. This has an 8 turn cooldown and this also again can be omega to level 8. This ability instantly defeats the targeted enemy. Darth Nihilus gains max health equal to the target's max health. The defeated target cannot be revived, this ability can't be evaded and starts on a cooldown. This special ability will kill any target that you target within the game. However, this does start on an 8 cooldown but can be significantly reduced by using Drain Force. He has a leader ability called Lord of Hunger and this leader ability can also be zated. At level 7 Omega, Sith Allies gain 60% offense and 100% health steal. Sith Allies lose all protection and gain that much max health. Sith Allies are immune to healing effects that aren't health steal and can't score a critical hit. 
So what that means, your Sith characters under this leadership, if they had, for example, 20,000 protection, that now would be converted into health. So they no longer will have the protection, but it would be converted onto their max health. With regards to the health steal, my interpretation of this is every time they do an attack, even if that's an area of effect, or even if that's a basic attack, if let's say for an example they hit for 10,000 damage, they would receive 100% of that back as their health heal. This is very similar to how Kylo Ren's Zeta works on his Outrage when he does attack with his Outrage attack, he's gaining that same damage back as protection. Under this leadership, however, Sif cannot critically hit, so they're not able to do any critical hit attacks, so it's definitely going to change the way that you mod your Sif. On the description of the leadership, it states that Sif allies are immune to healing effects that aren't half steel, so we can say definitely for sure that Barisata will not work here. There is something that I would really like to test once the character has been released. I would like to see if heal immunity affects this half steel. If you did want to put 20 Zetas into this leadership, in return you're going to get an additional 50% health steal, taking it to a total of 150%. Darth Nihilus also comes equipped with a unique called Wound in the Force. This can also be Zetered. At level 7 Omega, at the start of each of his turns, Darth Nihilus inflicts damage over time for 2 turns on a random enemy that doesn't have any debuffs. If all enemies are debuffed, inflict damage over time on a random enemy. Again, if you wanted to then put 20 Zetas onto Darth Nihilus is unique, this then will give you, at the start of each enemy turn, Darth Nihilus will inflict health down on them for two turns. So we've got through all the abilities, now let's go on to the theory crafting part of it, and where Darth Nihilus is going to fit within your team, and where's he going to fit within this meta. To do this, we're going to be looking at four leader abilities that include Emperor Palpatine, Darth Nihilus, Darth Vader, and finally, Darth Maul. So let's have a look at an Emperor Palpatine lead and see if that's going to benefit Darth Nihilus or is it going to not really get the best out of him. So what we know so far to get the best out of Darth Nihilus is that he needs to be within a debuffing team that is able to inflict them debuffs so he's then able to gain that power to reduce annihilation. In theory you want Darth Nihilus going after the debuffer so it's then going to give you a 100% chance to increase the enemy cooldowns by 1. This will also then benefit Darth Nihilus with reducing the cooldown of Annihilate by 5 as long as you're hitting all 5 of those characters that are in the enemy team that are debuffed. My biggest concern with running a Darth Nihilus under an Emperor Palpatine lead is there is no turn meter gain for him. He is a slow character and he can still be ability blocked by an enemy, Boba Fett. That brings me on to a Darth Nihilus leadership and again the issue with this is there is no real fast AoE Sith. They are very slow, you're getting no turn meter gain from this and turn meter gain or turn meter reduction can play a big key part within the arena. I would believe this is where Sif Assassin comes in with her Dark Stroud special ability that can also then feed her meter to the entire Sif team. As we haven't seen this leadership as yet, it's going to be very hard to determine the outcome of what the Half Steel will do, what Heal Immunity could do, and overall what will the team do without any critical attacks. This leadership is something that I will revisit once I've got some footage and I've got more information of how the mechanics work. But what I can say for now is what I do think is it will fall victim to the popular Darth Vader Zeta. That brings us on to the Darth Vader Zeta lead. This is easily one of the best Zeta leads for Darth Nihilus. With a very fast TIE Fighter pilot this is easily going to allow you to start reducing a turn meter on his first turn. Following this, you're also going to be able to use Darth Sidious, Darth Vader and Darth Nihilus' AoE attacks to not only do their abilities, but also reduce some more turn meter. However, the downside to this is that Darth Vader's Zeta team is like a well-oiled machine. It already has its specific characters that go in there, and you are going to need to drop one of them characters to fit Darth Nihilus in. So let's have a look at the Darth Maul Zeta lead. In my opinion, I do believe this is the best leadership for Darth Nihilus. However, the biggest flaw to this is that you're going to need to have some really fast mods on these characters. For example, with the Maul Zeta leadership, it then times the actual speed of your Sith characters by 1.25. That is an opening speed, so that's not an overall speed, it is the turn 1 speed because they gain 20% turn meter at the start of the encounter. 
So for an example, if your Darth Maul had a 200 speed, when you entered the battle, that would be timesed by 1.25, which is the 20%, and that would then give you a 250 opening speed on your Darth Maul. For another example, if you were using an Emperor Palpatine under a Darth Maul leadership and you had your Emperor Palpatine at 220 speed, at the opening speed, so that's the start again of the encounter, you would then times that by 1.25 which would give Emperor Palpatine an opening speed of 275. So that we are on the same understanding here, you would take your character's speed that is a Sith under the Darth Maul Zeta lead and because you enter the battle that 20% extra turn meter is actually a 1.25 of your speed so all you're doing is times in that by your actual speed on the character then it will give you your total opening speed for your first turn. This will definitely help you work out what mods to put on your character to make them faster than TIE Fighter Pilot or Boba Fett. Currently without Darth Nihilus within a Maul Zeta team, how it normally works is that you'd have a very fast Emperor Palpatine and what you really are relying on is that AoE stun. But there is a lot of elements to the RNG to if it will stun the entire team or any at all. My suggestion now will take away a lot of the elements of the RNG. Once you've put Darth Nihilus within this Maul Zeta team, you really still want to be going for the approach that Emperor Palpatine then again goes first for his AoE stun. Following this you want to have a Zeta Darth Sidious, then you want to be using his AoE attack to inflict damage over time and also the expose. Preferably you want Darth Maul to go next to inflict his AoE daze. After Darth Maul you want Darth Nihilus to go next and use Drain Force. What we are aiming for here is to have an entire debuffed enemy team, so when you do use Darth Nihilus' Drain Force, you're going to then ability block them unofficially that can't be debuffed, so you're going to then increase their cooldowns by 1 and then decrease your own cooldowns for Annihilate by 1. So effectively you're reducing the cooldown of Annihilate by 5. Then you could also use as your 5th character someone like Baze or General Kenobi. Again, the major flaw to this falls down to mods and the speed secondaries. You're going to need essentially 4 characters including that opening 20% turn meter faster than the entire enemy team. Your biggest threat here is definitely going to be a Rex leadership and it will be determined if you can make your maul faster to go first and inflict that daze to Rex and the entire team that then is going to stop them gaining that turn meter when any additional attack so that daze will be inflicted before maul does his AoE damage. In my opinion the best leadership for Nihilus is either a Darth Vader Zeta or a Darth Maul Zeta. Nothing is meta proof and what can easily mess up these teams is an ability block or a stun. So what are you going to do? Are you going to gear Darth Nihilus? Are you going to be using one of the four leaderships that I mentioned in this video? Or are you going to go a completely different route? Let me know in the comments below. I'd like to say a big thank you and well done to the guys over at SWGOH.GG with their continued work and getting all the information updated for all the characters as quick as possible. If you have liked this video then please remember to use your force powers to hit that like button. Thank you very much for watching my video today and I do again apologise that I'm unable to get any Darth Nihilus footage as of yet. I'm the Smithy D, may the force be with you, always.